live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Peter Murphy begins now. Good evening. A teenager is dead and others seriously injured after a horror crash on the edge of Hobart's shopping district. Traffic was diverted from major routes for most of this morning as police try to piece together why a driver appears to have run a red light. It's a sight no one wants to see. A smashed up ute. The impact leaving the front passenger no chance of survival. Just after four this morning, the ute was northbound on the Brooker when it struck another car heading along Bathurst Street. Unfortunately, an 18 year old male passenger within the vehicle travelling on Brooker Highway uh, was pronounced deceased at the scene. Two other 18 year olds in the car were taken to the nearby Royal Hobart Hospital with serious but non life threatening injuries. The driver of the other car, the only occupant, is also in hospital. Early in their investigation, police believe the cause came from disobeying a traffic signal. And unfortunately, that's the vehicle that contained uh, the young man that was uh, deceased at the scene. This is one of the busiest traffic points in Hobart, an area intersecting key routes that bypass to the north and south of the central business district. The nearby roundabout, a gateway into the city. Key roads were closed for almost eight hours. Diversions around a confronting scene. So any of these scenes are certainly uh, traumatic for emergency service personnel. Uh, and we are fully aware of the um, impacts uh, not only on the family of those people involved, but the wider community. Roads have since opened here where the incident took place in the early hours of this morning. Police using the tragic event to reiterate the importance of obeying road rules. We of course urge people to slow down, take that extra couple of minutes to get home. Authorities urging anyone with information to contact police. We have been liaising with the family of the young man involved and a report will be prepared for the coroner. Lily Thompson, 7 Tasmania News. Premier Jeremy Rockcliffe says the Liberals' 2030 strong plan is on target after ticking off another initiative in his new government's first 100 days. A $5 million boost for early childhood education announced today, which aims to grow the early childhood workforce. And he says there's more on the way as he looks forward to the next 100 days. Lauren Morelt knows the difficulties of finding a childcare placement. She faced that challenge even before now one-year-old Harrison was born. From word of mouth, I'd known how hard it was to get him into daycare, so I had to start the application process. During pregnancy, um, even just to look at returning to work close to a year. Putting $5 million on the table to build on the state's early childhood workforce, the Education Minister also fulfilling the final commitment under the Liberals' first 100 days promise. That fund is to look at this workforce, what can we do to upskill them, to grow this work workforce and then to support this workforce into the future. We're really happy to see them addressing the workforce crises in the education and care sector. For the Premier, this promise ticking off a list of what he says are the government's time-bound achievements. And that $5 million package is just one of many initiatives, in fact 77 initiatives that we've completed in our first 100 days. Not everyone's impressed. Well, so look, this is a nice gimmick. They come out and say that they've ticked to all the boxes, but Tasmanians keep telling me the same thing, and it's that this government never delivers. But the government's now focused on the next 100 days in its so-called 2030 strong plan. The Premier undertaking to deliver 120 more initiatives over the next 100 days. A part of the plan, he says, will target growing the economy and creating more jobs. But also focus on the areas that matter, including housing, of course, cost of living and health is so crucial. Hungry to achieve more promised priorities. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. Labor leader Dean Winter is doubling down on his stance in backing the controversial UTAS move into Hobart CBD, saying it would give students from surrounding areas easier access to the tertiary institution's facilities. I want to make sure that every young student, whether you're from New Norfolk or Bridgewater or Sorrell or Hewanville, has the same access as a student from Sandy Bay. People say, oh, it's only two bus fares, but 
you know, seriously, at the moment, the way the transport system's working, it's a very difficult route, particularly in winter. The Premier says no one is stopping the university from moving into the CBD. Many parts of our state are not unfamiliar to a foggy start, and that was the case again today in the north. Residents waking to a near whiteout. Drivers were forced to slow down, while the low-level high-intensity fogginess also led to travel disruption. Some flights to Launceston Airport were delayed for up to an hour before the fog slowly lifted late morning. While the Olympics begin in Paris this week, Tasmania's Institute of Sport is looking ahead to the Games of 2032 in Brisbane, putting selected athletes from around the state through their paces at a camp in Launceston. Athletes selected for the Tasmania Institute of Sport Talent ID program being tested at their first training camp. Three, two, one. Let's go, mate. Push, 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 push. Good, beautiful, mate. 40 of the 75 chosen teenagers determined to show they have what it takes. Among them, Bernie, 17-year-old Caitlin Spur, who's been selected for her pistol shooting prowess. It's, I'd say, 90% mental, 10% physical. Um, you've got to have the ability to hold up the gun, have the strength to do that. But it's the mental strength to be able to last 60 shots, one after the other. Which is precisely what senior sports scientist John Gregory is looking for as he vets the athlete's performance. There's a famous quote that, uh, you know, it's more about mental than it is about physical. So we want to see kids that can basically perform under a bit of pressure, but also are committed to the process of being an athlete. Today's camp is the first of three that will be held over the next 12 months. 14 to 18 year olds all eager to represent their sport. Athletics, cycling, rowing, hockey. I think we've got one squash player as well, so lots of different lots of different sports. As for the prospect of representing Australia at a home Olympics in Brisbane. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for it. Melinda Ogden, Seven Tasmania News. A new respiratory function grading scheme is being rolled out by the Tasmanian vets for the first time, assessing short-nosed dogs for breathing problems. It aims to help breeders lower the risk of producing affected puppies. Precious Pooch Giggles has a certain charm, a squishy muzzle, wrinkly face and bulging eyes. But with these unique features can come with serious side effects. It's airway disease, so upper airway obstruction and a tendency to have narrow noses means that they have to breathe in a lot heavier than normal dogs. But a program is hoping to change this. It's designed to help determine the level of breathing function, mainly in short-nosed dogs. Giggles is among the state's first furry friends put to the test. The process is um, examining the dogs at rest and then uh, trotting the dogs in a controlled environment, so for three minutes at um, between six to eight kilometres an hour. Focusing on the noise the dogs make and how heavily they breathe after their brisk exercise. Grading the pooches on a scale from zero to three. Zero is a dog who doesn't have any evidence of airway obstruction. Grade threes are the one we worry about the most. They have potentially life-threatening disease. A vital piece of data for dog owners. Allowing vets to determine healthy and unhealthy dogs within breeding populations. Uh, it's important for us as breeders to know that um, the dogs that we are, are breeding are happy, healthy pubs and the best that we can get them. The personality of these dogs is just absolutely amazing. It's unfortunate they have health problems, so if there's anything that we as vets can do to help minimise health problems, um, then that's what we need to be involved in. Rebecca Gaydoneris, 7, Tasmania News. The Northern Hawks are Tasmanian Netball League premiers for a third straight year after a convincing Open Grand Final win over the Cavaliers. The Cavs got off to a rocky start but came back firing in the third quarter. However, it wasn't enough to claim victory. The sound of victory. Congratulations to the Northern Hawks. This year's Netball Tasmania champions decided. The final siren signalling the end of the season. The Northern Hawks cementing their spot in history as undefeated. Final score here at the Silverdome, 56 to 48. A grand final rematch between the Hawks and the Cavaliers, but it was the Hawks flying high for another season. I'm just very proud, very proud of our club, very proud of you know each and every one of these girls. It was a magnificent game. After 14 home and away rounds, semis and preliminaries, the Hawks were clear favourites, marking their ninth consecutive appearance in the grand final. Coming in firing, hungry for victory. You can't let them get momentum, which is what we did in the first quarter. 
The Cavaliers are putting up a good fight. I think they really pushed us for the full 60 minutes. We really couldn't get a break there, you know, more than those five goals that we had for most of the game. But it wasn't enough to stop the champs in the pursuit of a premiership three-peat. The Hawks pulling away in the final moments. A minute 20 to go, it's 54-47. Driving home an eight-goal advantage, 56 to 48. <laughs> it's not all bad news for the Cavs, with two of their players chosen for the Australian under-21s team. Paige O'Neill and Charlotte Walker will rep the green and gold in Fiji. I'm really happy and excited and shocked and oh, it's too many emotions to think about. <laughs> for now, the Hawks will soar high for another season. Rebecca Gatineris at 7, Tasmania News. Good evening, Hobart and Burnie reached a high of 14 today, 13 in Launceston and Devonport. 15 was the state's top temperature about King Island and Ouse, Flinders Island and Smithton reaching 14 and 13 in Strawn. Low to mid-level cloud thickened over Tasmania today while moving over from the west. Further out, Victoria and southern parts of WA and New South Wales have patchy low-level cloud overhead with the rest of Australia looking mostly cloud-free. Tomorrow a trough sits to the east of Tasmania with a cold front moving over the west of the state. West to northwesterly winds tomorrow reaching 20 to 30 knots, 35 knots at times about the southwest in the afternoon. Swells up to 5 metres in the west and south and up to 2 metres in the north. A gale warning is current for the southwest coast. A strong wind warning from Low Rocky Point right around to South East Cape, and a minor flood warning for the South Esk and North Esk rivers. Tomorrow's forecast now Hobart a shower or two with more showers across Dover and Ouse. In the north, Launceston and Devonport showers increasing in 15 showers, reaching 14 degrees in Scottsdale. Burnie and Strawn tomorrow showers, windy with showers in Stanley. St Helens and Swansea 16 with a shower or two and 14 in Ross. Looking ahead to the three-day forecast now, Tuesday showers about the west and north easing during the afternoon. Wednesday fine apart from light showers developing in the north and Thursday showers mostly in the west of the state. Capital cities 20 and showers increasing in Perth tomorrow, a shower or two in Melbourne and mostly sunny in Sydney. And currently Hobart mostly cloudy and 10, Launceston 11, Devonport mostly cloudy and 12. And you better dig out those gumboots, Murph. It's looking like we can expect more wet weather for the week ahead. We'll do that, Jackie. I've got a nice pair of red and white ones I can break out tomorrow. Now, finally, cat enthusiasts have pounced at the chance to celebrate their perfect friends at Hobart's first international two-day feline festival. With over 100 glamour pusses putting their best paw forward on the cat walk and in various competitions. We, we want to do is to advertise pedigree cats to the public so that they know that they're getting a cat that is uh, bred well and has good genetic lines. While some were taking things seriously, others were just kitting around. Breeds of all types are on show, Bengals, Ragdoll, Siamese and others all looking good and feline fine. Amazing what we can find to fill in some time. Well, our time is up for tonight. That's our news for now. Thanks for joining us. Good night.